Welcome to the NEPA Scene Podcast. We're coming to you live from Cole Creative in downtown Wilkes-Barre. Uh, I'm Rich Howells. I'm the founder and editor of NEPA Scene. And I'm John Popko from Alt 92.1, and I am the Saturday night host of Alt Natives on Alt 92.1. And I, I figure we're, we're probably getting a, a few more viewers on this one than we, we normally would, so I guess I should it's say that back, yeah. NEPA yeah. Scene is the weekly live extension of the largest and most read arts and entertainment publication in northeastern Pennsylvania. So thank you guys for tuning in tonight. Thank you, John, for deciding to join us after, what, like a month? <laughs> busy guy. Yeah. He's we're, a busy guy. Very busy. You are. You are. Well, you have your, your very successful show, which we're going to talk more in depth about next okay. week. Yeah. Um, but tonight, we're here with uh, Breaking Benjamin bassist and backing vocalist Aaron Brock, everybody. Hi, how are you? Uh, so we're answering your fan questions, which I have written down. So if you posted anything on our Facebook or Instagram or anything like that, I wrote all those questions down. We're going to get to those later. Uh, but you can also leave questions down below. Uh, we're going to be talking about his years in the local music scene, playing in, in local bands like R After, Panacea, uh, how he joined Breaking Benjamin, uh, what it's like going from... Uh, playing this area to across the country in arenas and stadiums, uh, singing and writing songs on their latest album, Ember, uh, returning to the pavilion at Montage Mountain uh, next month, and much more. So please stay tuned for the full conversation. We would love to hear from you guys. Make sure you leave those questions and comments. We will get to them uh, later on. We do have some stuff prepared. So we're going to try and uh, uh, do this as, as, as quickly as possible and get through all of the, your questions uh, because there's there's so many. Uh, Ring Ben has fans all over. It the world. sounds like a lot to do in an hour. It is. It's, we'll figure it out. We're we're gonna we're gonna <laughs> figure it out. But you know what, what's gonna make it easier? These beers from Beer Boys. Uh, beer Boys gives us these uh, wonderful crawlers from their 72 beers on tap each week. Uh, so this week they gave us some uh, Susquehanna Brewing Company. Uh, we have Shady Spot. We have an Orange is the New Ale, and we have uh, the Daily Double Tea, which is uh, something that they've they've had out already, but I guess they're canning it this year, and it's a little more widespread this year. Cool. So uh, which one do you want to start with? I'm, I'm fine with whichever. I was worried that you like you didn't drink anymore. I really don't drink anymore, but yeah. I'll try them. It's fine. You thin, uh, you're, you're, all, you're all thin and like in I, shape know, now. Like, right? You're you know. like half the man. Yeah, <laughs> man in a good, yeah, in a, in a good way. Yeah, the uh, you know, the weight the, you lost, I probably put on, so it's even. No, no. In, in the world somewhere. So which one did we opt for? We're gonna go with the daily double. Okay. Which is a like a iced tea beer. That's uh, it's a little different. It's good. An iced tea beer. Yeah, we had it uh, last week as well. Thank you. Brewed uh, right here in the uh, Pittston area. Piston. Uh, Piston. No, no, the Piston. Cheers. D yeah, I didn't. Ex you don't expect that. Yeah. What do you? What do you think? It. The description is perfect. It's an <laughs> iced tea beer. Yeah. So, which I expect. They nailed it. To not be good. Yeah. But it's and it smells good. a lot more lemony than mm -hmm. it tastes. Well, I remember when Twisted Tea first came out, everybody talked about it, and I had it, and I thought it was terrible, but they've, they've changed it since then, and it's, it's, it's definitely better, but this right out of the bat, I think, was, yeah. was really good. Yeah, that's good. So, um, Beer Boys has a half-price happy hour every night of the week, 8 till midnight, Fridays and Saturdays, 9 to 11 every other night of the week, so be sure to stop down for their free glass nights on Wednesdays and tell them we sent you. They also have live entertainment on the weekends from 10 p.m., and there's never a cover. Speaking of live entertainment, the V-Spot is our other sponsor, one of the most popular bars in northeastern Pennsylvania with live entertainment every night of the week. This week, uh, Young Lion is playing reggae and jamming out on Friday night starting at 10. Slapjaw is celebrating 21 years as a band on Saturday with three other metal bands, Beyond Fallen, Black Nihil, and Earthmouth. And DJ Huff is hosting karaoke on Sunday. Remember slap, uh, slap job? Wow, like that's I was like that's that's wild. <laughs> that's a wild for sure. I was just thinking that myself. I'm like 21 years. Yeah, okay, that's that sounds about right actually. Yeah. So uh, congratulations to Slapjaw. You're old enough to Absolutely. drink now. <laughs> 
so let's dive right into it. Um, you know, a lot of people, I'm sure, watching this know you from Breaking Benjamin, but obviously, uh, you know, uh, we know you for a lot of other things before that. So uh, can you talk a little bit about how you got started in music originally? Yeah, I, um, how I got started in music originally. Um, well, I guess that was, so like 1999 was when I like started doing music full time. Um, I lost my job and my, uh, my awesome wife, when I came home from losing my job, Instead of throwing me out of the house, she said, well, you're going to get unemployment for a while, so you might as well see if you can make this music thing work. So that, that was, uh, you know, we went, we went from there. And it's, uh, and that was where the, that was where the real struggle started. <laughs> <laughs> the starving musician. So, yeah. But, you know, then it was just like, you know, finding, finding bands and playing in what was our local scene then. Most of those places aren't even around anymore. Right. Um, you know, none of those bands are around anymore. And, um, yeah, that was, that was the beginnings of it. It was, uh, you know, it was a much different time because pretty much everywhere that you went, uh, there was always live music and almost anywhere that had live music, there were a bunch of people there. So like the cover scene here was massive and every night people were going out to the bars and they were going to see bands and cover charges <laughs> can you believe that no <laughs> yeah it was crazy uh but yeah and bands got paid it was uh yeah it was pretty cool <laughs> <laughs> bands got paid it sounds like charges. some kind of utopia yeah, it happened i swear <laughs> to god i was there i didn't dream the whole thing there's there's, there's kids now that are 21 who a don't go out right and if they do go out they're like oh, cover charges what the fuck yeah. are those yeah, they got the Touch Tunes app on their phone, yeah. though, and they're going to spend 20, 30 bucks on that thing. Yeah. Sure. So, yeah. And, you know, the, the cover charges haven't changed either. It's still like $5 at yeah. the door, and it has yeah. been for how many years? Yes, yeah. if you can get people to pay that. Right, exactly. So. Even then, people scoff at it. Yeah. So uh, what were some of your favorite projects that you kind of worked on in that time? Oh, man. So, like, I guess, like, the first the first band that I really, uh, that really did much around here was... Uh, like when when I lost my job there it was uh, I joined a Dave Matthews tribute band that was called Crush with uh, Eric Rudy Eric Rudy's still around oh yeah mm -hmm. and, uh, he's still going so, yep yep and uh, Rachel from the Tommy Guns band was in there and uh, uh, yeah and it was uh, it was really cool we had a keyboard player named Dave who like graduated from Berkeley he was one of the most talented people I ever played with and uh, the Dave Matthews stuff was fun to play on the bass and it paid well so it was uh, so that was uh, so that was where that was where that started and uh, I did that for a while and it was um, I'm trying to think what was after this so and then State of Mind was after that and then um, and then you 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 where yeah, I met, yeah. where I met Mr. John Phillips, Guido. And then, oh, Shout out, Guido. Good old call Guido. me back if yeah. you're watching this for crying out loud. Yeah, wherever you are, <laughs> stop. don't call. Don't call me now. Yeah. Stop walking Coco's dog and call Popco. <laughs> <laughs> so, hey. um, but yeah, and then like the the list of bands was like was pretty extreme, mm -hmm. and it was like while I was in Crush. Um, was one of the, oh, my phone's blowing up now. <laughs> um, so <laughs> Comment here, so, uh, not there. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> it's fine. Um, so uh, I did, someone said that the volume is low. I, I did okay, get that. Well, so that was some constructive. I'm, that I'm was, sure Nick can. That was from Sean put that Foist up a bit. from Ohio. Who's that, that guy? <laughs> never, never heard of him. <laughs> He's an up and comer. You know, oh, okay. he's up and cut. People should have you have you taken him under yeah, your wing? Yeah, people should keep their eye on. In more ways than one, I have taken Sean Foist under my wing. Yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> so um, but yeah, while I was in while I was in Crush, uh, I was never like a, I was I wasn't a very good guitar player. I played bass, and I bought uh, when I was at that job, like I bought an acoustic guitar off a guy that worked with me, mm -hmm. and uh, like he needed money for rent or whatever, so he <laughs> sold me like this Takamini guitar for 50 bucks or whatever it was. And um, so I was like, well, when I was in Crush, like we'd play two sets of music and then before the third set, um, 
we all, you know, I started playing like two acoustic songs before like the band would go back on. So, and then that kind of rolled into me playing solo acoustic shows, which is, uh, and I ended up doing quite a bit of that for a really, really long time. But yeah, I started the, started doing the solo acoustic stuff. And I think there was like the only, I think the only people that were playing like solo acoustic gigs back then were like me and Charles Havera and, uh, and Rob Brown. So I think they're, that was, they're both still doing it too. Yeah. Think, now, did, did you like doing that? Because I get a lot of like, like musicians who are like, I, I really hate doing that stuff, and there's some that really love it. It's, I mean, it really depends. It's, like, it's pretty much like playing you know, anything else. It's, you know, if you're in a place where there's a bunch of people that are receptive to what's going on mm-hmm. and they're like involved, then that's you know, super cool. And you know, like the, the one place that I used to play up in Scranton every week was called the Metro Lounge. And it was hysterical. It's I can't, what's it called now? It's it, is it still Mertz's? Is Mertz's still in Scranton? Well, now it's Harry's. Now it's yeah. Harry's. Okay, yeah. So a million years ago, that used to be called the Metro Lounge, and uh, yeah. So I played up there, and uh, it was hysterical because it was like I had this really beat up PA system that didn't sound good, and that Takamine guitar that wasn't an acoustic electric guitar. I had one of those Dean Markley pickups that you jam into the <laughs> sound hole. Yeah. So then I plugged that into that, and that didn't sound good either. And I had like the cheapest musician's friend microphone that ever was, <laughs> and that was, and that that was your entertainment. That's what you got. <laughs> <laughs> And you liked it. And and you liked it. That's right. And I I spent well, I spent most of those nights just like play a couple songs and people would uh, you know, there was people would like bring me shots with their request. Like this was this that was how they paid for requests. Like here, bring this <laughs> shot. Like, yeah, that's great until like fifteen requests in. Right. You're, you're in you're not in good shape anymore. Um, but yeah, it was <laughs> That's the real rock star life, yeah, right? Yeah, not there. not great, not, <laughs> not great. Yeah, and then you know, then you remember that. Wait, I'm in Scranton, and I have to get to Dallas. That's really far. Yeah, don't. <laughs> there was no Uber. No Uber don't drink yeah. and drive, kids. It's bad for you. Um, so, but yeah, that was that was like the start of that, and um, I guess it was was it 2002 that I won the I won I won a Weekender Award. For uh, What's the, the weekend, for the, yeah, remember that <laughs> for the best acoustic act. I was so proud. I have, I still, ca- I have the plaque. in my basement, and it says, um, and it says Weekender Award on it, and it says that was O two, and it's yeah, it says best acoustic act, and then it says Aaron from Crush. Awesome. <laughs> I couldn't even get my name on it, so it's no. just like kind of a. <laughs> it could be anybody. Yeah, right? that's been kind of like a rolling thing, though. Because right. like you know, Aaron from Crush, then Aaron from UU, Aaron from Panacea, and now it's Aaron from Breaking Benjamin. So <laughs> it's it's it works out because my last name is complicated to pronounce if you look right. at it. So right. yeah, Brutch. Right. Yeah, it's Brook. I know. Yeah, I know. I know. God, <laughs> God damn it, John. See, I got it right. I know what it is. Yeah. Speaking of what, how did you first first meet him? Because I mean, your your connection to local music scene goes back a little bit longer than mine. So yeah, you, I, you probably knew Aaron a long time. I don't even know. There's there was no like definitive uh, moment. Uh, I just remember you in Panacea. Yep. And I remember you acoustic solo at Liam's. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. R.I.P. Mm-hmm. Liam's. R.I.P. Liam's. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that was before. He legally changed his name to Popco. It was he was born Johnny Weekender. Yeah, and now I'm the, <laughs> the artist formerly known as. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, I, God, I mean, I don't re- remember the the specific time. Yeah, he just kind of like mean, appeared, and I was like, this yeah, guy it was cool. like a, yeah, it was just kind of a. I think it was the Weekender connection. Yeah, because like everything, yeah. you know, he was he was always. He was always out on nights that I was playing somewhere, and you know, or and he was a huge fan of Panacea too. So, right, it was just kind of a, you know, a natural thing. And I was, not many people know this, but I was a trusted advisor, because <laughs> true story, I would always hear the, the Panacea songs before anyone else did. That's true. Because after mm-hmm. Liam's, he was done there. We would go yep. and sit in Subaru, correct? Mm-hmm. Right. <laughs> R.I.P. Subaru Outback. My <laughs> wife made me get rid of that car because she said the back seat smelled like gas. <laughs> You'd be like, dude, you gotta hear this. 
So we, after we wrap things up at Liam's, we listen to some Panacea tunes. Nice. It was cool. Yes. As a trusted advisor. Is what yeah. I, yeah. This is what I just called myself as of right now. Absolutely. That's, and that, and I was banking on the fact that he was too drunk to remember anything that he just heard. <laughs> but I remember all of it. <laughs> <laughs> so you just said it was all great, essentially. Yeah. And it was. I was really sad to, to, that that band never got to the next level. You know, that band will always have, like, a huge chunk of my heart. Um, just because I loved the music. I loved everybody in the band. Um, you know, how it ended and how it all, you know, ended up going down. It is what it is. Um, it all happens for a reason. Point. Yeah. You know? So, um, but yeah, it's, I love that band. Yeah. I love that band so much. And Paul, I'm still mad at you that the Panacea music is not on iTunes or Spotify or anything. Figure it out. <laughs> Thanks. Let's settle this right now. All right. Uh-oh. Whose idea was it to deface the Weekend cover? Whose idea was it? Okay. Um, is there a story? Are, you, is the, are we going to finally hear the truth? Oh, my God. <laughs> um, whose idea because was it? Because it was, it, it, at the time, it was probably 2006, mine. I think, everyone pointed the finger. It was probably mm -hmm. my idea. T if Tim, I, knowing Tim had myself. Spray paint. <laughs> you pointed at somebody else. Polly pointed at somebody else. Was it Kevin? Kevin? It was definitely so. It was definitely a premeditated thing, and people are watching this, going, "What are they talking about? And why should we care?" <laughs> right. So the Weekender is a thing, and uh, I don't. Is was the Weekender is the Weekender still a thing? Mm -hmm. Does it still it's exist? It's kind of still around. It's kind of kind of limping along. Okay, but it was last couple of the Weekender used to be like a big thing. Like, you know, you'd go pick up your Weekender and you'd look in the middle to see where you were going that it was weekend. Like a phone book. Yeah, it was great. Yeah. It was great. They had this one salesman who sold a whole lot of ad space, and uh, now he's over there drinking a beer. Uh, <laughs> and uh, yeah, kids. So there was, um, there was what was it? It was Alice in Chains and Velvet Revolver was the show. Yeah, and you guys were playing. And we were playing the B stage outside. So if you come see us at Montage, I'm sure there will be a band playing right before you walk in to go see the actual show. Take a minute and listen to them. Last year, Another Day Dawns was out there, and I went out and I like snuck out and watched them for a little bit. Um, but yeah, they work really hard. They practice a lot, and they want you to like listen to their music. Don't ignore them. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so there was so the Weekender had this competition where they put a band together. Ken Norton, I love you still, but yeah. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. But yeah, there was like they put. This there was it was like a big weekend of concerts because I can't I think Poison was up there that weekend too or somebody else was up there that weekend yeah. and they listed every band that was playing on the mountain and then the Weekender put together this band of like different people Weekender and Coors Light Weekender and Coors Light <laughs> so sorry um, Coors Light yeah sorry sorry for Astro uh, so, <laughs> so, so they put together this band called Mesh and. We got, you know, we went and we picked up the Weekender and we're looking at the cover and the, we see that all these band names are on the cover and we're like, oh, okay, that's cool. And then we see that this band Mesh is on there. It's like, we're playing that stage too. Why aren't we on there? You know, we pay a lot of money to that publication and advertising. You know, we do <laughs> play a lot of free shows for, you know, whenever they do an event, we'll go in and play. And it's like, or if not free, it was like trade for sure. advertising. There was like no money exchanging hands. And, uh, and I remember us all seeing that and being like, huh, okay, so they're putting a band's name that doesn't, and, and in hindsight, it doesn't matter at all. Like, <laughs> at all. It doesn't matter at all. But, uh, <laughs> so, but we were mad. We were really mad. Like, we're at practice, and we were mad. Yeah. And uh, we're like, okay. We'll show them. So what are we going to do? Like, I was like, <laughs> I, I don't know. Let's do something. And we did, and we did something. And we did something. I don't remember. I, it very well could have been my idea to, like, I, I was, I think I, um, my recommendation probably would have been to, like, set it on fire and throw it at people. But that, you know, they, uh, that probably would have been a bit much. Yeah. So, uh, so what ended up happening was, uh, you know, Tim came out with a copy of The Weekender 
with all this stuff on it. And he said, we couldn't help but notice that there's a band name missing from the cover this week. And he threw it on the ground. He took a piece of spray paint, or he took a can of spray paint and spray painted our logo <laughs> onto the cover, held it up and said, looks a lot better now, and threw it out in the crowd. <laughs> and the crowd went wild. <laughs> and then Johnny and Katie and everybody Tiffany. else from the weekend, or Tiffany, they were all like, oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> There's one person to blame. Yeah. For your logo or name not being on that cover. There's one person. Paul. No. Who? Who is it? Who was it? Whose fault? His name is Steve Houston. Oh. Steve. Fuck that guy, right? I said it wrong. I said it wrong. There's a certain way that you have to say it when you're mad at him. Steve! <laughs> That's it. Hi, Steve. And he was I don't the know if he's watching or not. Yep, he was. It's, it's ultimately his fault. <laughs> he was mad at me. Paul, Paul texted and said it was his idea. Mm. Oh, so the truth. The truth, Paul. See, now it finally the truth, comes. Paul, shall yeah. set you free. <laughs> <laughs> See, this is the oh dirt the weekender yeah. will tell you. That's, that's mm-hmm. why you know. Most kids don't even know what the hell's going on over there. That's, most kids don't even yeah. know what a weekender is. We're all mad. So yeah. what was, you know, obviously, you know, uh, Breaking Ben was around uh, for, for a long time, too. What were your, were you a fan originally of that band? Did you, uh, you know, see them on yeah, so like shows my, and stuff? Yeah, so there's like weird, there's definitely weird uh, Breaking Benjamin history. So when I joined <laughs> that band, Crush, um, what happened was in, in that very same Weekender magazine, there was an ad for... Uh, for a company called Media Five Entertainment, like there were like the big management company for like local bands that like booked shows and stuff like that. It was really a booking agency more than a management company. Right. Um, but so I called the number. She had openings for three different bands then, and one of them was Crush. And she's like, "Well, Crush, I think you'll do great at because they're you know they have really busy schedule. I know you have kids, and uh, and you'll make." You know, you'll make money with that band. You might not love the music, which I did love Dave Matthews' band at that time, so mm-hmm. it's cool music. Um, and then the other one was a band called Project 67, and she was like, they're going to make... I, I used to have really long hair. It's real. Sorry. I don't <laughs> anymore. Uh, <laughs> um, and the, uh, that band was called Project 67, and she's like, that band might not be for you. He's probably going to make you cut your hair and do like... And I was like, okay, so we'll pass on that one. She's like, and then the other one is there's this band that's called Plan 9, and they're not very good, and I don't know that they're going to go anywhere. So you should, like, don't even go see them. Um, Which, you know, about six months later, Plan 9 changed their name to Breaking Benjamin. Um, So, and, uh, but I mean, so they... But who's to say? Who's to say I would have gotten the base gig at that point in time anyway? So uh, you know things things worked out uh, the (laughs) way they did, all for a reason. Absolutely, absolutely. So then, um, yeah, yeah. There you go. I like Plan Nine too, because I'm a yeah, but people didn't get it, and they kept they, like calling. Totally they kept like calling it Planet Nine. <laughs> it's like, uh, yeah. no, 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 no. That's not it. So, um, but yeah, then uh, I got like uh, I was talking to my friend Bug, who was uh, who was the bass player for Breaking Benjamin originally. He called me the one night, and he's like, "Dude, you got to come down and check out my new band." Mm-hmm. And uh, so I went down to the uh, to the good old Voodoo Lounge. Um, you know, everybody. You know, a lot a lot of the people are like, "Oh man, I went to see Breaking Benjamin." You know, when they were only five ten people at the Voodoo Lounge. I was one of those five ten people, and I, I know who the other ones of you are. <laughs> so <laughs> it's uh, but yeah, um, and then you know I was friends with Freddie, so you know Freddie was always there supporting the band and helping the band get off the ground. Yep. So um, you know from that uh, from that time on, like I was a fan of the band. You know, when I walked in, you know, they were doing like Godsmack and Perfect Circle and Tool covers and stuff. Um, and that night I actually, uh, you know, Bug had me come up and play a song with them and I did mm-hmm. like, and I did Mud Shovel by Stained with them. So it was nice. it, with, uh, with Ben and Jeremy. So, and you know, I just got into the habit of going to see them and, um, yeah, and I loved that band and they played, uh, I'm trying to think, 
we didn't get there like at the beginning of the night because I'm uh, I I was a chronically late person and we had really young kids so we kind of had to wait for the kids to go to bed before we could go down, go down and see the band um, so uh, yeah they played they played Medicaid and I remember I was like wow what is what is that song and they're like oh that's ours and that's really really good you know and as as he started uh, as he started putting more and more of the original stuff in the set it was just like this band is you know I just loved the music you know it's just like it was something it was something special to me so um, and then you know getting to be friends with him like he'd have a night where he wasn't feeling good and I remember like walking in on a Thursday night and having you know been walking out and like I was just sitting there at one of the tables there was like a little like a little elevated section in the corner of the voodoo lounge where there were a bunch of tables and I was mm-hmm. like sitting up there and uh, you know Ben came up and like somebody tapped me on the shoulder I had no idea who it was and I turned around and there's Ben and he's like hey I'm not feeling so good so would you mind coming and looking at our set list and see if there's anything you could sing and just like sing some songs for us tonight and so and uh, so yeah we did uh, so I did that and then there was you know we were just kind of friends from there and then you know the band obviously yeah, the band obviously took off and like uh and all the, and uh so that that's where that's where that went and then so you guys kind of did you stay in touch at all yeah oh yeah or? absolutely yeah. absolutely always and then you know we had like a bunch of mutual friends there was um you know there was uh, a band that opened for them for a while that was called uh, end of the gray mm-hmm. and um and matt giordano uh, was a mutual friend of ours who and Matt is one of like my favorite people on the planet. Who works with uh, you guys now too? Yeah. What's that? Yeah, yeah. Matt is uh, Matt and uh, his his amazing company Posture are uh, they, they do a lot of a lot of stuff for us. They handle like all of our like all of our branding stuff. Tony. Just, yeah, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Tony deserves like sainthood or something. But um, yeah, so that's. Uh, so yeah, we just stayed in touch from there, and I'm I'm losing train of thought now. Well, you know, I I remember uh, it, it was like a huge thing around here. Like there were you know rumors and text messages and stuff, and like hey, the band's coming back, you know, because they they went on hiatus for a while and lineup changes and stuff. And Ben had come out like it was like 2013, mm-hmm. and uh, was ready to to kind of start playing out again a little bit. Mm-hmm. And was just kind of doing like, I'm just going to show up at an open mic kind of thing. Yeah. And, and play some stuff. And you were right Those there. Those happened to be my right shows. <laughs> Those happened to be my open mic shows that you would show up to. Fail so, house and stuff? Yeah. Yeah. He just liked to, the one night where it was like the tomato bar in Pittston. Yeah. And, you know, I was, I was playing and he's like, okay, so I'm going to come out. But, and um, he's like, and I'm going to like, text people like I'm going to put a thing on Facebook like an hour before that I'm going to be there and I'm like I wouldn't text anything until you're <laughs> there just you know completely like oblivious to the power of what his social media was at the time because people were like he you know when he kind of fell off the radar for a long time dealing with his stuff and um, I don't think he was like fully aware of how much he was missed right. and uh, you know how much power he had to like draw people to like even a little random place in the middle of Pittston, Pennsylvania. You know, people that got in their cars from like Philly and started driving up. Oh they're, yeah. They're like, yeah. Oh my God, like I gotta get, I gotta get there. Cause I never know. You don't know if you're ever going to see him again, you know? <laughs> but, uh, yeah. So that was, that was pretty crazy when we, um, so like, I guess it was 2010. Yeah. Yeah, because I, jo- I just got the thing that I joined. Uh, I joined Facebook nine years ago today. Happy Facebook anniversary <laughs> to me. So that means that it's July 11th, which means that today is the day after I got home from doing the two acoustic shows with Ben. Hmm. So we did, because, uh, yeah, he was finishing up the Dear Agony tour. And he called me, and he's like, I want to do a couple, like, solo acoustic shows. And I want you to come like sing and play with me. I'm like, I'm not like a great lead guitar player or anything. So you might want to be careful what you wish for on that. And uh, (laughs) he's like, Oh no, no. He's like, I mostly just want you so that I have someone to sing with. And, you know, we rehearsed a bunch for that and it was, 
so much fun. It was, we had such a good time and we did those two shows and it was, and we were, we played in uh, New Hampshire and then at the House of Blues in uh, Atlantic City. And it was awesome. It was awesome. We did, we took like a little RV that was not, and RVs are totally different from tour buses. <laughs> Much did, they're not meant to be like lived in while it's driving down the road. There's just like stuff rattling everywhere and it's hysterical. <laughs> but yeah, we did those two shows and, you know, I, before we went out for the first one, you know, Ben was like, this is going to be awesome. He's like, there's no pressure on me at all because I know for a fact, as soon as we walk out there, everybody's going to be looking at you going, who the fuck is that guy? <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, thanks, man. No pressure. <laughs> No pressure. That guy is not a guitar player and is playing these parts now. Cool. (laughs) Cool. So you didn't have much time to really learn all that either. I mean, it was, yeah, it was like over the course of like two months between like when he like told me it was, we were going to do it. And then, you know, and at the same time, it's like, I can't really tell anybody like what's going on because it's like just kind of like definitely didn't want to like draw attention to the situation and then have people like you know because it's once something like that happens you know then it's immediately like oh this guy is the you know this guy's the reason that the band's not together anymore this guy's the reason the band went on hiatus you know you killed breaking benjamin thanks appreciate that i didn't (laughs) wasn't my fault i didn't do it uh so but uh i got asked to do something by my friend and i said yeah so that was it um but yeah it was not a not a really long turnaround time so it was a lot of it was a lot of practicing and uh i don't think i i don't think i killed it too bad i don't think i <laughs> acted it awfully so. well clearly because that obviously led into to more as it as yeah it along, yeah know? yeah and then you know by the time everything you know came back around it was it's like everything got settled and then there was you know we were you know we were working on you know we were playing like together for most of that time like we just get together and like play um you know sometimes you know and for quite a long time it was just you know me and you know me and him and uh and it was great yeah i think like the first public thing i remember uh was a video like you two guys playing i think there was a red wall in the background oh yeah that was so that was that was the that was the basement of um that was the basement of ben's house so he, um, yeah, he had posted a, like a cover video of him, or not a cover video because he wrote the song. Uh, so he posted a video of himself playing Dear Agony, just him and an acoustic guitar in his basement. And it was incredible. And the response that it got was nuts. So he was, you know, a little, little bit of time went by and he's like, I, I really want you to do a song with me for this. And you're like, you know. It's like this is what it's going to be, so we might as well have people like like hear it, not making any announcements about anything or whatever. But you know, so we uh, you know, so we did breath, and we posted that video, and it had something like fifty thousand likes in a day or something like that. Oh yeah, which, it was is, insane. which was nuts. But little did people know that we were in the basement at his house watching, uh, and there was uh, on our buddy. Dan Corniff was uh, was there recording stuff for us, and we were sitting there, and we had like a big television that he had his computer hooked up to, and we were actually uh, working on stuff for Angels Fall, which was on uh, which was on the Dark Before Dawn record. So we were already working on album stuff at that point in time. Mm. That shows you how long it takes to get those things done and turned around and everything else. So right, yeah. So that was uh, so that was pretty cool, and we're like kind of hitting refresh and see, it's just watching the the <laughs> likes go up is like unbelievable. So, but yeah. Well, I mean the 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 Voodoo Lounge show was a, was a big deal. I think at that point it was like Gators something. Like it changed yeah. names a whole bunch of times. Just that show was called Gators. I think that was like some kind of legal thing. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah was, it was. Well, weird. it was that was what it was going to be. That was what the name of the place was going to be in the back when they when they opened up the back it was going to be Gators Pub. Uh, I see. So. Um, yeah, that was the thing where we were. Uh, so when we came together as a band, um, and we had 
the album done and we were ready to start like going out and playing shows we were in a um, we had a uh, we have a building in uh, in New Jersey where we practiced and we were there for six or seven weeks straight and we practiced every day and we'd be like we'd we picked out a set list of a bunch of songs and then we would run that set list at least twice a day you know and when we weren't running that set list twice a day you know we were like practicing individual parts and you know we definitely like yeah it was almost you know it was almost like kind of like a military thing where you know you go off to boot camp and those people that you went through boot camp with those are like your brothers <laughs> for the rest of your life so you know we had you know we had that kind of thing where you know it all came together and uh you know in that and av- after that we were like okay well now we need to we need to play a show and i was like well i know the people who bought what used to be the voodoo so i can make a phone call mm-hmm. and see if we can bring the band back where you know where it the started band started the part, yeah. so i think you know it would be a really be a really cool thing and Ben was like 100% if we can make that happen let's make it happen so uh, you know so I made that phone call and they were like yep we'll figure it out and then it's like okay and the original idea was to play the two shows you know because we played two nights in a row mm-hmm. and we we're going to play the two shows and it was going to be um, no pre-sold tickets just walk up only and then I was, and then you know that's when like management people start coming in and they're like (laughs) you realize this is insane right you can't just have like you know a cover at the door and like it only holds like 700 people so you're not going to be able to do you know more than 700 people are going to show up there's going to be a lot of problems so there was a lot of uh there was a lot of logistical stuff that came into that and that was when i called my my good old friend john phillips (laughs) <laughs> and I was like, okay, call John Popko back. And it's like, uh, and it was like, well, you know, because there's there's things that people don't even think about when it comes to shows. Like you need you need someone to book security for it. You need someone to you know rent barricade for it. You need to you know you need to have liability insurance for the show. So and uh, and John uh, through you know through his production company had done a bunch of shows and he already had all those connections and he already had the liability insurance (laughs) and uh you know there were some like touch and go moments there where like the you know they they were saying we're not going to let the show happen because of like fire code and stuff like that and uh john actually had to go sit down in a sit in a meeting and (laughs) uh and help smooth that over oh there you go i said not now he's calling you he's calling you that's great but not right now (laughs) <laughs> see you called him excellent doesn't follow directions that well but uh, you know we were just talking about before the show um, I remember going to that show uh, the first one and there was a guy from Brazil there like flew yeah. in from Brazil yeah. <laughs> just for that show it mm-hmm. shows you how much of a fan base Breaking Ben really has yeah there's a picture on our Instagram of that guy and it was <laughs> it was incredible because like he came in and he's like got this Brazilian flag <laughs> and uh, and he after the show we ended up talking to him and he's like yep I flew here just for this show and I'm flying back out first thing in the morning so like he came out came to the show we got to spend a few minutes with him he was yeah, super excited and a really nice guy. And then he was like, okay, I have to go. And he went to the airport <laughs> and slept at the airport and then flew back to Brazil. So that's not crazy at all. No. Like, but thank you for doing that. I appreciate it. <laughs> so, uh, and you guys still do stuff like that, really. I mean, I, I remember the 2017 show, too, at Hops and Barley. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that was just like a out of nowhere sort of sort of thing and that that pl- that was insane oh too. my god i'm like I, i'm like i'm media i'm here like hours in advance and they're like you can't get in there no there's there's people who have been here all day we're so <laughs> dumb we're so dumb like it's you know and that was another thing where it's like ben would be like you know we'll just you know 
we'll post about it. We're going to do it on Friday, but we'll post about it on Tuesday. Like, you can't give people three days no. no. Like, they're going to fly here. Like, that gives people enough time to make travel plans. And you don't want that because it's, you know, anyone who's, anyone who's been to Hops and Barley's knows that Hops and Barley's holds, like, 100 people, and that's packed. It's like a little family restaurant yeah. in the back. Like. Great place. Yeah. Great food. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah totally absolutely great. love Hops yeah. and Barley's. I, uh, Hops and Barley's, like, that was a kept slow. me afloat. For a long time, I played Hops and Barley's acoustic every Tuesday for like four years. Yep. <laughs> so those people are like family. So to be able to go in, but that's kind of like, like paying it back. Yeah, like, absolutely. To be able to go cool. in and like bring some attention to here, them, yeah. and yeah, not that they need the attention because no. Hops and Barley's is <laughs> but this doesn't hurt. Packed every day. So <laughs> oh no, it doesn't hurt at all. So what is it like then to go from you know uh, the, the the struggles that we were talking about earlier? Now you're, you're on the road all the time. You're traveling all around the country. You're playing stadiums. You're playing arenas, stuff like that. What kind of adjustment is that for you? Oh, wow. Okay, so, um, so going into this whole thing, I had, um, I had a mindset that I wanted to make sure that I always kept, and that's that as long as you remember that none of that like stuff is like the big shows and like all the people and all this. As long as you remember that like none of that's real, then you're gonna be fine. You know, you're gonna be okay. It's like once you start buying into all of that where people like really start to like their personality starts to change and like who they are starts sure. to change and they start like, so it was like a really conscious thing for me to make sure that I tried to keep myself as grounded as I could. And going through the struggles that, you know, putting in a lot of work for a long time you know, really uh, helped. And then, you know, having you know, having my wife and my kids who, you know, are the best support system that anyone could ever ask for uh, really helps. Uh, but at the same time, that makes being away from them for the right. amount of time that you have to be uh, hard. But I, you know, at the end of the day, I get to do what I love and I somehow get to make a living doing that. So hmm. I really have no room to bitch about any of it. So. <laughs> Uh, one thing I want to say before it kind of ties into it um, you know going back to that time on stage when you were in a band that I don't want to say doing nothing but right but by comparison you're saying yeah by comparison you guys had more of an attitude than you do now like you're, you're such a humble right yeah well you know that was an, uh, that was a th which one is this one now this is the SBC Orange is the New Ale Okay, my, my daughter texts me that I have a daughter who's old enough to drink and she goes to beer boys all the time. I'm the designated <laughs> driver. This is, a, this is real. So my, <laughs> my daughter will be like, Dad, we're going to beer boys. Can I, uh, will, you, will you drive us? So I'm the designated driver. It's awesome. So, and she, she texted me before and said, go shady spot. So like, mm. Okay. That. Well, that's up next, actually. Yeah. We just kicked this one, so. All right, so. But it's just so uh, cool, like, to, to where you are now. Like, none of that has gotten to change who you are as a person. Yeah, like, and that's, a, that's like, a 100% conscious effort, something that's always kind of in the front of my mind, like, trying to make sure that, you know, I, I love what I do, and I try to respect the, you know, the industry and all the fans as much as I possibly can, you know, while at the same time trying to, you know, remain the person that I was before. Mm. Um, hopefully a better person than I was before because I could yeah, kind of... I could, 100%. I could kind of be a dick. Uh, uh, 100% though. But Absolutely. Yeah, so that's... Uh, yeah, so that's... I guess that's that for there. Um, and you're, are you're, you're meeting national acts. I mean, you're touring with like Avenged Sevenfold, mm -hmm. Five Finger Death Punch. Is there any that, uh, that stand out to you particularly... Uh, fun bands to hang out with or to tour with or anything like that? Anybody that you guys maybe got along with really well? Yeah, we spent a lot of time with Five Finger Death Punch and Bad Wolves last year and nothing more. Um, those are all really, uh, really great bands and really fun people. Uh, I, was actually, uh, I was actually talking to Chris Kale from Five Finger Death Punch just a few minutes ago because we're doing a festival with them in Wisconsin next mm -hmm. week. So it's like our first show back is like this big festival with all of the bands that we toured with last year. So it's kind of like, you know, 
it's kind of like the first day back at school where you get to yeah. see all your friends that you didn't <laughs> see awesome. for the summer. So that's uh, that's pretty cool. And then there's uh, like I'm trying to think who else. Uh, we just did a tour uh, where you know we had Under Oath out with us, and those guys are awesome. Mm. Um, and just you know we've made you know we've made like a lot of really cool friends. We had we did the tour with Disturbed, and everybody in Disturbed is a sweetheart. And what a, the, that was a great show because that was us and Disturbed and Alter Bridge, and uh, so all the guys from Alter Bridge are great. Um, you know, Miles is one of the nicest guys on the planet. And then, you know, the other three guys were this band called Creed that was the biggest band in the world for a long time. <laughs> I love Creed. Ever heard of them? Um, I have no shame in that either. St- still, still, you still love Creed. So, yeah, and, yeah. and Scott, Phillips, Scott Phillips, the drummer for Alter Bridge, the drummer for Creed, he does the absolute best Creed Shreds impression that I've ever heard <laughs> in my life. Because I had to ask him, like, so this was, like, the biggest thing on the internet, like, the Shreds videos. If you haven't seen so Creed Shreds, go watch it. It's hysterical. I don't think I've seen them. So, oh my God, watch them. <laughs> yeah, okay. Watch them. So I swear it's, to God. So it's I like, swear, I swear to God, <laughs> you have to watch Creed Shreds. There's like, uh, so yeah, there's like Creed Shreds, and uh, like the, there's a Nickelback Shreds one that's pretty great. I love Nickelback too. And there's, there's, Fight and, me. I don't and there's care. nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with you. I'm, I'm sorry you like well written songs. It's okay. There's some, um, but yeah, it's so the one night we were hanging out, and I, I was like, I really hate being the guy who asks this but <laughs> how do you feel about like the sh- the, sh- the Creed Shreds videos and he just goes off on like this big imitation of the whole thing and I was like you're amazing <laughs> you're amazing um, oh it's great and then um, Saint Sonia was on that tour too and those guys are awesome it was uh, you know Adam from Three Days Grace and Mike Mushak from Stained and so I got to like tell Mushok that he had a weird connection to us and that the first song that I ever played with Breaking Benjamin was a Stained song. So it was pretty cool. Does Stained get back together? They Stained out? is playing a show. Uh, they're playing at Louder Than Life, which is a festival that's in Kentucky. And we are. it is our last show of this tour, which is the end of September, uh, is at Louder Than Life. And we're playing on Sunday, I think. And Stained is playing on Friday, I believe. So it's like, it, I remember when it got released, and I posted it on Instagram. I'm like, does this say the return of Stained? That's awesome. <laughs> okay, all right. So yeah, I'm all for it. Yeah. I'm all for it. Me too. So as a music fan, you get the benefit because you get to go to all these shows that not everybody has the ability to, to oh, get Oh, absolutely, to absolutely. And, and I get, yeah, like and that. I get to do it from a perspective <laughs> that's like, I would have never imagined ever. <laughs> right. um, like that's, that's kind of what this summer is going to be for me. Cause uh, if any of you ever came to see me play acoustic or like went to see Breaking Benjamin back in the day, you would know what massive Chevelle fans me and Ben are mm-hmm. and as are Jason and Keith and Sean. So like this is a bucket list band for me mm-hmm. that we get to tour with. I love Three Days Grace. The band has done a bunch of touring with Three Days Grace before. They're all really, really great people, and they're a great live band, and it's going to be awesome to get to see them play every day. But, like, it's... I get to, I get to play with Chevelle every day. <laughs> the sound those guys make with the three piece. Three people, yeah. It's nuts. Yeah. And nuts. it's, like, very much a family thing, too, because it's, like, the singer and the drummer are brothers, and then their bass player used to be their other brother, but they got rid of him and brought in their brother-in-law. So it's like still <laughs> like very much a family thing. Yeah. So it's, but yeah, just three guys and they just kill it. And I cannot wait to get to see it all the time. Isn't there a relation between the old lead singer of uh, Three Days Grace and the new one? Or no, I th- I'm, I'm pretty sure the new lead singer is, uh, is the bass player's brother. Maybe that's what it was. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So, but yeah, Adam's great too. Adam, uh, Adam Gontier. It, it's weird because it's like social media makes the world smaller, you know? Sure. So it's like um, being a fan of Three Days Grace and St. Sonia, it's like when people like, you know, you'll, you'll be there. It, people like stuff that you post. It's, it's really weird. Like you see like 
Adam Gontier commented on your post. That's pretty cool. Yeah. That's pretty cool. I had one of those, I had like one of those things where, uh, so Corey Taylor from Slipknot posted this picture of him wearing like this wrestling mask a couple months ago. And uh, it was before he had like, they had posted pictures of like what the new mask was. Mm -hmm. So, and I just like randomly commented on it and I just said, new mask confirmed. And then <laughs> I got, and then I got, a, <laughs> and then I got like, uh, I got notifications that Corey Taylor liked your, liked your comment. Corey Taylor started following you. I'm like, what, what? <laughs> but, so it's like, it's weird. So yes, even, you know, stuff like that is crazy. But. I think it's cool that you watch my son on the internet. I do, I do, <laughs> I do. I watch your son on the internet. Um, that, that's not, not what it sounds not like. Not in a creepy way. way. No. I, he's, his son is adorable and it's a, it's, shut up. We're friends. Internet. <laughs> shut up, internet. Stop being like that. So, <laughs> it's, 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 <laughs> so um yeah all right so we got nine million questions we let's we, let's we do have a ton of them bonus round all right well let's uh let's blow through a whole bunch um right. that we uh we took earlier on facebook and instagram so thank you guys for that i'm not gonna read full names or anything like that but i'll, I'll read uh, just like your first name real quick uh final beta which I'm, I'm assuming is not your real name any update on the acoustic album and when it might be released and um, uh, any idea what might what songs might be on there um it exists it will contain music and it will be out at some point there that's you go. what i got that's what i got for you there <laughs> <laughs> sorry uh let's see well jimmy said uh are you guys going to play any songs from the first album? Uh, I'm sure a lot of local uh, fans are probably like, hey, well, you know, play more, you know, and uh, obviously you, have, you guys have a whole catalog. Yeah, so... It's so, hard to go back to those, but... Uh, yes. Um, so I, uh, I kind of skimmed through some of those and I'll answer two of the questions mm -hmm. at once. So I know one person asked what my favorite album that I didn't play on was. Yes. My favorite album that I didn't play on was Saturate. Um, that just that that album just has like a special place in my heart. Um, I think they're all great. I um, you know we're not alone is an awesome album. Um, I was sad that Simple Design had to wait until that album because it was mm. already a song for Saturate, but obviously stuff has to you know stuff has to get left off. So I was just glad that it showed up then. And then like and then you know going all the way to. Um, going all the way to Phobia, it took all the way to Phobia for Topless to be a song, and Topless was a song, you know, way back, way back before Saturate happened, too. Um, uh, so, yeah, those are, they're all, they're all, my, they're all my favorite. <laughs> what was the question I was supposed to be answering, though? <laughs> which, what, what, you, which, uh, are you guys going to play any uh, oh, songs yes. from, yes. From, the, from that album or from some of the earlier stuff that, that people might want to? So, yeah, so we've been doing, um, you know, we kind of alternate out stuff at this point. So it's because we only have a set amount of time that we get to play for, you know, and especially on a show like this where there's not, it's like basically a traveling festival at this point. There's five bands on the show. So mm -hmm. it's, it's us and Chevelle and Three Days Grace and then Dorothy and Diamante. So it's like, it's a huge bill that's, and it's a really, really long show. So we only have like, a set amount of time that we're allowed to play for. And uh, so we're gonna try and change up, you know, the set as much as we can. And there'll be like certain parts of this, obviously, you know, there's gonna be staple songs. Like if you come see us, you're going to hear Diary of Jane. You don't have to request it. You're going to hear it. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I Will Not Bow, you could probably yeah. bet that's gonna be in there somewhere. So um, yeah, it's So Cold probably gonna play that one <laughs> probably you know uh but it's like uh yeah so there's certain songs in the set we'll we'll try and you know change it up so that we could do some some stuff that wasn't necessarily like a single like uh so we've been doing the last tour we did you know we're, we started doing sugarcoat which is fun and uh you know we've done you know over the, over the past years we've done pretty much every song I think we've done most of the songs off of Saturate. We haven't played, 
we haven't played next to nothing. We haven't played no games, and we haven't played um, we haven't played forever. So, uh, but I think we've done every other song off of Saturate. So, um, yes, the hope the answer is hopefully we will be able to change it up enough to uh, to accommodate everyone. Uh, Johnny wants to know, uh, would you play a 10th anniversary tour of Dear Agony? A 10th anniversary tour of Dear Agony? I have no idea. You know, we talked about, you know, doing, because, you know, Saturate just had a milestone last year, and We Are Not Alone just had a milestone, like, Mm -hmm. a few weeks ago. So it was like, uh, you know, doing those those kinds of tours would be awesome. Like, I guess it was, I don't remember if it was last year or the year before where Korn did, like, the entire first album. And I was like, that's amazing. I would love to go see that. Um, and then, you know, Seven Dust did the same thing where they had, like, a, they had an anniversary of their first album. And I actually went and saw that show at the Electric Factory in Philadelphia, and it was great. I'm very jealous. Uh, it was great. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, they're, uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure they're never going to play Terminator again live. So I was like, mm. <laughs> so you gotta get it in I got to see it <laughs> I got to see it that's fair so, oh my goodness Janie has a big one what is your biggest fear uh, is there anything you regret uh, not having a chance to do um, so like with this uh, I guess like the the big regrets are things that you miss like uh, you know like proms and you know kids first days of school and I was actually in Europe for my oldest daughter's 21st birthday, so I didn't get to I didn't get to celebrate her birthday with her. But there's like you know there's those are the those are the big things that you know it sucks that you missed, um, and biggest fears. So um, you know, I I'll get real deep. I'm not even gonna make it like a musical thing. I guess like my biggest fear is to not be my kid's hero. Mm-hmm. Like I want to be my kid's hero. Is that like a selfish thing? It no, might that's be. a good one. I get that. It now. might be. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Three years ago, I wouldn't have got that, but yeah. And I right. get it now. Yeah, for sure. So, what else we got here? I'll, I'll, th- I'll throw my buddy uh, Gene Philman uh, up on oh. here. Uh, he said, uh, Is System of a Down on your bucket list of bands to play with? I have seen System of a Down live a few times. It would be amazing to play shows with them. Um, that would be, yes. That would be a yes. Uh, and there's uh, there's absolutely Deftones on that list too. Mm-hmm. So Deftones, if you're watching the any PA scene podcast, play shows with us, pretty please. <laughs> uh, Lindsay, your favorite your favorite tour memory? My favorite tour memory. I have a lot of them, and they happen all the time. Um, the coolest, like the first like favorite tour memory, would probably be the first time that. And I'm like going back to just constant dad stuff here. It's <laughs> like you kind of. Once you yeah, once you happens. once you hit a certain age, you kind of yeah. like gauge your milestones by what your kids get to do. Mm-hmm. So we it was uh, it was in Youngstown, Ohio. It was in 2015. We were playing with Shine Down, and my wife drove all the way out to Youngstown, Ohio, with my son, and that was the first time he got to come out on stage uh, with us. And he was very very little, and uh, it it was like my Facebook profile picture for forever. It was just a. <laughs> It was just me holding my son and him like waving and us both waving out to the crowd. It was great. Um, That's adorable. Yeah. And then uh, musical like memories uh, like that were directly mine. Um, getting to play Download Festival because uh, as a bass player, I was a huge fan. Yeah, I, I'm a Metallica fan. And um, they, uh, they had this video that was called Cliff Em All. And there was like Metallica playing at Donington, which Donington Festival turned into Download Festival. So getting to play the festival that like I watched on a video that forever ago was really <laughs> cool. Um, the fan reaction from people like over in Europe that you know people you've never seen, people you don't know, people who don't even speak your language, and they're <laughs> just they you know you get there and they go crazy and it's nuts. Uh, those are great memories. Uh, playing in Russia, you know stuff like that. Very very cool. Uh, what uh, this, this? These are from a couple from Instagram. Uh, I'm not pronouncing your username. Sorry, it's not happening. Uh, Do you ever think that Breaking Ben would ever make any song collaborations with other bands? Is there anybody you, you guys wish you could collaborate with, or would you guys ever be interested in doing those types? Oh, of songs? there. I mean, 
Uh, so we've all, I think everybody in the band has, has, has done like collaborations, you know, with other bands they are just not like publicized or advertised or anything like that. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, like, uh, it was pretty cool. Uh, so the local, uh, well, local ish, about an hour and a half South, the boys in Crowbot. I, you know, I went and went and hung out with them. I'm super excited to hear their new album. Very, very, very excited too. about Hopefully that. Hopefully they'll, they'll be on this couch next month at some point. So. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I will text, I'll, I'll, I'll send text messages and be like, make it happen. <laughs> um, I'll be back. Yep, did some, uh, yeah, I, you know, I did some stuff with them. And then Jason, mm -hmm. uh, you know, Jason has worked with, you know, everyone. And he's just an unbelievably talented guy. And mm -hmm. Keith, you know, uh, Keith's a great songwriter, a great singer, a great performer. Mm -hmm. He's very handsome. <laughs> you know, there's, uh, and he's done, you know, a whole bunch of, like, collaborations with other artists as well. Um, so, yeah, I guess the answer is we already do. You just maybe, maybe not. You just maybe don't you know gotta, about it. Just gotta look out for him. You know, and th that that uh, brings up a, a point too. I wanted to make. You had some. Uh, you you did a, uh, some more writing and and uh, you know singing on this album. Mm -hmm. um, and could you talk a little bit about uh, about that? Uh, I I believe I read that you you wrote a big part of like Red Cold River and yeah. stuff like that. Yeah, so. that was uh, that was a pretty cool thing. That was pretty cool. Uh, so we were. Dark Before Dawn was pretty much done by mm -hmm. the time the whole band was put together. And, uh, you know, Ben had had a lot of time off and, you know, a lot of personal motivation to write from. Mm -hmm. So that album was pretty much done. You know, we sort of wrote um, uh, Never Again off of Dark Before Dawn was like, was, a, was this, the song that we got to put our creative input on. And then, you know, when it came time for this album, it was like, uh, it's like, okay, we're, you know, we're writing an album as a band and it's, you know, we're, we're kind of all spread out all over the country. So, you know, the, the idea of getting into a garage or a rehearsal space or a studio or whatever, and like having us just like jam out ideas for hours and hours on end and hope something good comes out of it. Like that's, that was never going to happen, but thankfully, uh, technology is what it is. So we're all able to kind of just put our ideas together and then um, you know with Red Cold River that was that was something that we were kind of that was a chorus that I had written and we were kind of jamming around in Ben's basement it was actually just me Ben and Sean for the Dark Before Dawn album mm -hmm. and um, you know it was funny because Ben was like playing this Ben started playing this part and I was like whoa, whoa, whoa stop right there like before you even go any further like I have a chorus already that is pretty much exactly that, and here's how it goes. <laughs> and he was, and he was immediately like, "Okay, that's your chorus. We're gonna go with it from there." And uh, and he was very much like that for you know a lot of the process. It's like it's, as long as the parts that people came to the table with you know fit, and they were you know they they added to the band's sound, then of of course they were the what sounded the best was gonna be on the album. Mm. And he had us all you know. He would always, you know, keep us in the loop on everything. Like, okay, here's where I think this is going. What do you guys think? Mm -hmm. You know, here's the mixes of the songs. What do you guys think? And, you know, he, he has, you know, he has enough experience and enough of a track record, isn't it? you know, for himself that he didn't have to do any of that. But at the same time, he's like, you know, no, these are, you know, you guys are part of this. So, yeah, that was, uh, so that was pretty crazy. And then to have him tell me that Red Cold River was going to be the first single off the album was another thing that was like, uh, oh, okay, okay, all right, all right, sure, 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 why not, why not? So it's like, and then the song came out, and it was like, all right, that's pretty crazy, you know. And then the song went to number one at rock radio, and I was like, I woke up and I was like, okay. Uh, so yesterday, I was just like, I was like. A musician and a bass player. Now I'm a now I'm a songwriter and producer who, of a number one song. <laughs> I didn't do anything different than I did the day before. It's just crazy <laughs> how titles get like thrown at you. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> but yeah, that was that was awesome. That's a good feeling. We, you know, and 
and this this ties into that a little bit. Uh, uh, Ro, uh, Rosanda, Ro, Rosina, I asked, uh, how long was it would it take? Uh, how long has it taken you to become a successful musician? Uh, we talked a little bit about that. Um, do you have any advice for people who are maybe interested in that? Uh, and this this is a question that maybe goes out to the whole local scene. I'm sure there's a lot of people who are local musicians who are like, I want that to be me. I want to I want to you know get into a successful band. I want to tour the world. Yeah, you know, I mean, I guess the most solid advice that I would give uh, that I would give a musician to, that I wish someone had given to me early in like my formative time, I definitely wouldn't have listened because I knew everything. <laughs> uh, but you know, like, at least I thought I did. I was wrong. You don't know everything. We all, we Nobody, all do that. Yeah. yeah. yeah so it's like, <laughs> but um, I guess like the most important thing that uh, the advice that I would give is. Just be honest with yourself about your music and don't be afraid to say that it can be better and, you know, know when something that you're doing isn't working, mm. you know, and if, and, you know, always strive, you know, strive to strive to do better. And uh, that's, that's something that, you know, I wish that I would have, you know, would have realized sooner because, you know, you end up writing, you're going to write bad songs. If you write songs, you're going to write bad songs. Not only are you going to write bad songs, you're going to write more bad songs than you write good songs. So, but use those as motivation. There's always something from, some, from, something from everything that you create that you can use towards something better. So just, you know, just know that you can, know that you can do better and you're capable of doing more and just keep it going. And obviously, hang on to those connections that you've made over the years too. You know, keep keep, uh, keep yeah. up with people. Yeah, know? absolutely, absolutely. You know, I, t I tell I tell musicians all the time, like the networking and meeting other musicians and collaborating and jamming out and whatever. That's that stuff is so so important. Oh yeah. And yeah. I, I think a lot of people come in, especially the younger younger kids I meet at like the open mic and stuff. They kind of might might come in with an attitude like, "Oh yeah, I'm already I'm already great. I already know everything. I don't need to learn anything from him, or I don't need to do this or that." And I'm like, "No, you do. You yeah, really need to." That's yeah. Really it's, I can, you can, you can learn something from everyone, absolutely. Even if it's learning what not to do, because mm -hmm. knowing what not to do is as important, if not more important, than knowing <laughs> what to do. You know, if you watch someone make a mistake, you can learn from their mistake for them. So, and don't don't be afraid to do that. Uh, that's yeah, God. Well, I I remember interviewing. Uh, speaking of Ken Norton, we talked about mm -hmm. him earlier. Uh, one of the things that he always talks about is like a proud moment for him was playing the Pavilion. To be able to play the Pavilion at Montage Mountain was like the dream of the local musician. Yeah, that was incredible. Yeah. Oh, I get to I get to play the biggest venue yep. in you know in our area. Uh, in front of all the people that I've known over the years and stuff like that. What is that like now? You guys are, you, you guys sell that out, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, pretty yeah. regularly. So yeah. you know, what is it like to, to play it from that perspective? Oh my God. So it's playing at any of those like kind of venues is just, it, it's overwhelming because there's so much going on and there's such a massive sea of people out there and it's, you know, you go out there and you're like, okay, these people want to, you know, these, these people drove for however long and they've been listening to this band for, you know, however long they've been listening to the band. Uh, so, you know, we're going to make sure that they get, we're going to make sure they get a show here, people. <laughs> so it's, uh, you know, but to get to do it is the thing. Like, to go out and know that, like, this is amazing. This is what I get to do for a living. Mm -hmm. It's like, uh, it makes that really really special and the first you know the first time we played up here at montage like ben called me out on the microphone he's like this is aaron he's from here too and like everybody's like freaking out it was really cool and it's really cool to get to play as and uh you know so we'll see how montage goes this year we're gonna knock on whatever this is made out of that we get better weather than last year and we don't have any right. of the issues that we had i apologize publicly to anyone who was uh who was uh, fault. put out by yeah, the was, by the events? There's a lot of different yeah. factors. Oh, it was that crazy. Play, play into that. It was crazy. There's like, only one way off and on the mountain. Yeah, it's so terrible. It's, little, <laughs> it's so bad. The, uh, the 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 positioning of it is pretty awkward. So yeah, that that's tough for any band, really. Yeah. 
but especially with you guys because you guys have such a local, yeah. dedicated following. Oh, yeah. built up over so many years that it's all your fault. Yeah, and it's like, <laughs> and you know, and and I have like friends that are like texting me like, dude, I'm stuck on the mountain. They won't let me up, or they're like. We're stuck out in the parking lot. They're not letting people in. And then after that, it was like, oh, well, they let all the people that were in the lawn under the pavilion, and now they won't leave, and there's nowhere for anyone to stand. And I'm like, I, I'm, I'm sorry. I didn't do it. It's like, I don't. Yeah, it's like, I'll send, I'll send a helicopter down, yeah, down the mountain for you and bring it yeah. up. Yeah, I have all of our fairy godmothers on it. They're working on it right now. They're just going to go out and wave a wand, and everything's great. Did you ever think that this would be your life? You know, um, you always hope, yeah. you always hope that it's gonna, you know, that it's gonna, that it's gonna happen. It's, uh, you know, you, you kinda, you know, you dream it and you do everything that you can to try and work towards it. And then when you're, uh, you know, whether you know that it's your opportunity or not, to be prepared when it happens and then have it actually like follow through. You know, I know that I'm in a very, very small percentage of people that get to say that that has happened, you know, happened to them or for them. Um, so, you know, there's always the part of your mind that's like, oh, well, what if it doesn't happen? You know, what if, you know, what if it, you know, and once you hit 30, in this industry, you're like, okay, I'm a dinosaur now, so it's like, <laughs> uh, this may not go anywhere. Yeah. And then it's like, okay, well, now I'm 34, and okay, uh, yep, and then it's like, okay, well, now this is happening. It's like, oh, shit. Okay, yeah, let's go. <laughs> and then now I'm older than that. <laughs> we'll leave it at that. Yeah. Uh, Corey Kime asked if you ever heard about Green Day. Yeah, it was a shame about that bass player from Green Day. Me and Corey had a running joke <laughs> where we would like go out in public and caught just to. So if you don't know Corey Kime, Corey Kime is a uh, is a notorious troublemaker. He, uh, he played in a, played in a band called Ashfall, and he's <laughs> awesome. Uh, but yeah, we had this thing where like we'd go out to a bar and have a very loud conversation. About uh, and, just, and it's like the most random thing, but it was specifically, hey man, did you hear about about uh, the bass player for Green Day? Yeah, he lost his arm in an accident. They're done. <laughs> <laughs> and just to see if we could get people like to freak out that right. the that the bass player from Green Day had lost his arm. <laughs> so uh, yeah, that's, that's so that's that yes, media, so that's what that is. And I'll you know, and Corey still to this day, like he'll just post stuff on Facebook just to start some stuff totally like i mean i'm sure every i'm if you if you don't know him he uh he kind of went viral a little while ago <laughs> yes. for this freaking thing where he like told people that ashley simpson was coming like that's what i'm talking about like the most irre like i made him tell that irrelevant story. nonsense <laughs> stuff that you would ever <laughs> think of. it's like nobody's gonna care i'm saying ashley simpson and then suddenly there's like all over the place oh my god ashley simpson's coming back <laughs> no it's just a dude in a friggin' warehouse in scranton wearing a guns and roses t-shirt like yeah, yeah, chill yeah. out <laughs> scummy yankee hat <laughs> <laughs> sorry Corey. they're they're playing very well this year Shut up. Shut it's okay <laughs> Shut up. you got a world series last year you know we got to keep always, the always want more. we got to keep the lead at 20. you know what i'm saying no, the lead in World Series titles has to stay. Oh, that that's it. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. Steve Slaughter says, uh, "Hi, Steve. Thanks for talking uh, my mother into the five string back when we worked at Wayne's World. Congrats on your success." Oh my God! Yeah. Uh, yeah. Let's see. Oh, uh, uh, Sean uh, Henson asks, uh, who's your favorite vocal inspiration? My favorite vocal inspiration. Mm -hmm. uh, so the easy answer is Maynard James Keenan. Um, Which is funny because Sean says you sound a lot like him. To, uh, that's, yeah. yeah uh, I have sang a lot of Tool and A Perfect Circle in my time. <laughs> uh, but I also, uh, I really love, uh, I really love Lane Staley's voice. And, um, who else? A big Chris Cornell fan, and um, you know, this is of course outside of the two people that I am lucky enough to get to sing with every day because Keith is 
incredible. And Ben is, I mean, Ben's Ben, but that's kind of the easy answer, right? That's kind of like a copy, like, oh, Ben is my favorite singer. <laughs> well, you guys, you guys post such funny, uh, like behind the scenes videos and stuff mm-hmm. like that. It seems yeah. like you guys are, are so close. You yeah. guys are like the, like the bestest of friends yeah. type of thing. Yeah. I'm usually the cameraman for those <laughs> little, uh, for those little skits, but now there's, uh, now we have, uh, a great, uh, a great media person named Courtney who uh, mm. she gets to do all that stuff now. <laughs> so. so, you know, one thing I wanted to ask too, uh, you know, you, uh, you posted a video of uh, you covering Nirvana earlier mm-hmm. this year. Uh, what, uh, that got me thinking, you know, would you ever consider doing a solo record? Has that ever been a thought um, in your mind? It's yeah. Yeah. So I de- you know, I've, I've written a bunch of music, uh, in the past and I've had you know from just from being this area I've had like a lot of people asking me if I would like consider recording older songs that like had never been released and like putting those out and uh, the the I mean short answer is absolutely uh, absolutely there I hmm. would absolutely write and release solo music so there's uh, right right now we got kind of a busy time going on sure sure and I can hear my wife saying you're making excuses shut up and record the music already <laughs> I know I know like, I'm having an argument with my wife through the internet for all that's of you to the enjoy. that's the kind of wife you need I would not yeah. be able to do what I do if I did not have that wife yeah, pushing me and, absolutely you know continuing to do that absolutely but yeah Keith does uh, you know Keith has some great solo stuff as well um, but yeah the answer is yes yes <laughs> And lots of lots of complimentary uh, thoughts and uh, feelings in here. Thank you all for for tuning in tonight. That's been kind of the thing since I joined the band. Is just I have been overwhelmed by the support, especially of this community who were who have always been you know. And our music scene was not very complimentary for a very long time. Like sure, you know, bands were fighting to get into the same rooms, and you know they were. You know, there was like a lot of back and forth between bands that, you know, didn't necessarily like each other or like this is, you know, you followed this band or you followed that band, but you couldn't follow both of them. And you know, those like, cover like, didn't. Really, really weird <laughs> right. stuff. Yeah. One, one band that never existed before got put on the cover of our local publication and the band <laughs> who had sacrificed hours upon hours of its time, you know, <laughs> generously couldn't even get like a sniff. That's fine. No big deal. If I was wrong about it. <laughs> <laughs> that might have been like a crossover period. So if, if it wasn't Steve Houston, I apologize. It may have been Damien, but I think it was Steve. So if it was not Steve, I apologize. Steve! <laughs> Damien, you're on the hook too, I guess. Yeah, okay, there you go. <laughs> there you go, yeah. But it's, I, 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 can't, uh, I cannot stress enough how thankful I am for the support that I've gotten. You know, And I can speak on behalf of kind of all of the members of the band now that I don't think we were prepared for how much support we were going to receive from the Breaking Benjamin fans as a whole because mm. um, it could have gone either way and the band was gone for a long time and they were you know very used to and familiar with and had love for the previous members of the band and rightly mm. so uh, there's not a person who has been in this band that I was not friends with so it's like I you know so I completely understand that and if people came back and said you know what we're you know you guys have been gone for five years this is a whole new band we're done that would have been you know it, that's something that could have absolutely happened but sure. it didn't and you know we came back and failure got released and people lost their minds and it was uh, you know it was incredible to see and uh, you know there they were just nothing but you know welcoming and awesome uh, you know you'll have your you know, you'll have your your YouTube comment section, where Always. you know people are gonna you know people are gonna people are gonna say things. People like to be mean. Yep. You're mean, internet. You're mean. It's fine. <laughs> but they're faceless. That's yeah. The problem. Well, that's yes. yeah. You know, you're you know you're super tough. Do whatever it is. You know, do your thing. I wish you the best with it. <laughs> so, but yeah, you know, you can't get you can't get upset about those about those people. But it's like no, they're I'm just sure. the over overwhelming majority was nothing but supportive and um, and they just embraced us you know from day one and you know for that album to come out and debut at number one it was like a whole it's like what just right. happened what just happened <laughs> so yeah but yeah that's uh, so yeah that's uh, that's that's that so for it's those crazy. who saw you at the pavilion last year, mm-hmm. uh, you guys have a little bit something different this year that uh, will 
you know, if, if, if people didn't catch it last time or if they saw it before and they want to buy tickets. Yeah, oh, that, absolutely. So this is something that's going to be... Absolutely. I mean, there's, a, you know, we try to keep, we try to keep the show fresh. Um, you know, we try to change out parts where we can. Um, you know, from staging to different, like, production things that'll happen in the show. Um, and then, you know, there's... There's also four other awesome bands that are playing too. That please come and enjoy those four other awesome bands. Uh, so that's uh, you know, there's there's a lot of incentive to come and see the show. I think it's a really great lineup, and I'm I'm gonna watch it every day. So <laughs> you have no excuse to not come watch it once. Totally. <laughs> That's uh, that's August tenth at the Pavilion at Montage Mountain, and mm -hmm. uh, you guys have a Hershey show coming up too. So if you're in the kind it's like of regional the area, week before is Hershey. Yeah, I think. yeah, it's like the end of July, I think. July yeah. maybe twenty seventh, something like that. So yeah, that's that's coming up fast too. Sneak in, see here. Oh my God, I'm just kind of trying to try and grab some last minute ones here. Yeah, anything else? So Gene wanna... Philbin, I love you. Um, <laughs> I need noodles. Um, Send do, 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 do. Yes. <laughs> yes. Oh, Yep Sure says what's up. Hi, Yep Sure. I, I found out who he was based off of that. Uh, I had to do some like internet sleuthing because yeah. he, uh, he takes great concert videos. And, oh, yeah, uh, I see his stuff all the time. I'm definitely a, subscribed to his YouTube channel. <laughs> yeah, he's, un he's unbelievable. But I kind of like based off, he came out and he recorded me, Sean, and Ben at. Hops and Barley's. Oh, okay. So the three of us on the little thing. And so based off of like w the, the perspective of his video, I saw a picture taken from behind the stage. And then I was like, that's Yep Sure right there. <laughs> and, that's it. and that's how I found that out. Um, do, 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 do. Okay. So that's the vocal inspiration. Do, 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 do. You guys are great, by the way. You guys are wonderful. Thank, Thank you, you so much. I can't believe you guys are still watching, <laughs> listening to me that's that's nuts that's nuts it's so cool <laughs> well i did share this in a few breaking ben groups that's okay because i figured some of those people from across the country might want to might want to tune into and these opportunities are rare so it's cool that we, we get to, we get yes. to do that every once in a while yeah thank you very much for taking the time away from your family before you head out oh absolutely play. absolutely yep we're uh we're we're out this weekend it's gonna be <laughs> Nuts. It's going to be nuts. And by the way, everybody say congratulations to my daughter, Alexandra. She graduated college Sorry. earlier this... Uh, yeah. Allie graduated college, Popco. So, right. like, when I met him, she was in, like, elementary school. It's so crazy. So it's crazy. She, yeah. So, she graduated college, and she got a job. Today, she got a job. So, my daughter Congrats. is... Uh, my daughter is a music teacher now. Awesome. Go, kid. You taught a little bit, too, so she's kind of following in the footsteps, right? Yeah, she knows way more about music than I will ever know. <laughs> uh, she's got, like, a degree in it and stuff. I, Jean had asked if I learned uh, through by ear or through tablature. Uh, the answer is, starting out, it was mostly by ear, which meant I was definitely playing a lot of stuff wrong. Um, and tablature is usually wrong, too. Uh, but across between the two of them. Um, you know, I, thankfully, my ear is pretty good, um, so I'm able to, like, find where I need to be relatively, uh, relatively easily. And then once you get, like, a basic knowledge of music, like, once you know what the notes are and you can figure out, okay, well, this song is in a key, so that lets you know that there's, like, so there's 12 notes in music total. When you find out what key the song is in, that narrows it down <laughs> to seven. <laughs> so, and the cool thing is, like, and if you're playing a wrong note, like, you have the benefit of knowing that on either side of you is the right note. So it's like <laughs> you're only you're only a half step away from being right. So, it's, <laughs> so a great lesson right there. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Charge for that. Absolutely. Right. I sh I should charge for that. I love teach. Yeah. I I love teaching uh, kids how to play. It was. Uh, something I did for a few years that was a, that was a lot of fun and definitely pretty rewarding. So, awesome. Anything else you want to throw in there? Oh man, it's good seeing you. Guys. It's good to see you too. It's Thank you so much. Oh, uh, absolutely. Really, really, really appreciate absolutely. It. it was a pleasure. It was a pleasure, yeah. Mr. Popco. Yeah. We we it's shaved so we weird. we uh, saved you some shady spots. Oh, we I got hold on. We I'll, kept you I'll, we I'll, kept you talking the whole time, so I didn't want to. I'm what's called a nervous talker, 
so when I get nervous about something or like I feel like kind of weird, <laughs> uh, like when a camera's pointed at me, yeah. it's like they're not even there. They're, they're not even there. Just us. Not even there. So yeah, I get like I just start running my mouth and it just keeps going, <laughs> and I forget that it's going. That's what makes the best interviews though, because like a lot of hosts, they want to talk about what they've done, right, and what they do. <laughs> Yeah. And it's not about the hosts. It's about yeah. the guests. And what, right. yeah. So, I mean, for you to sit here and talk, that's what we want. I, I know who he's talking about. I know exactly who he's talking I'm not going to say the so name, but I know who he's talking was about. There somebody, I wasn't talking about anybody. Mm-hmm. I was just... I was, okay, it's fine. No, that's seriously, I mean, like, that's how it works. That's right. But I will say that you guys need to tune in to, uh, to listen to Mr. Popko on Alt Natives. He has a yes. show called Alt Natives on Alt-1021 there's a Facebook page so if you want to go to that after this interview's over that'd be super cool mm-hmm. try to build that page out Alt-Natives on Alt-1021 and uh, what I do there is I feature an hour of local music from here in NEPA uh, I was playing some of Aaron's stuff with the Breaking Ben crew but I stopped doing national stuff I want to focus on the uh, the guys who are out there hustling playing shows who need music, the radio time yeah. who I, I enjoy playing your stuff, though. But also, oh, absolutely. Yeah. But uh, just keeping a, a more of a focus on the guys out there doing But it. as as somebody who has recently, like, oh, you know, I haven't been in this industry for forever, and it's still awesome to this day when I hear a song that I was a part of come on the radio. So, And I remember, you know, I remember what it was like the first time hearing that. And so what you give to the local scene by having an outlet for them to send something to and then be able to say, I'm gonna be on the radio this night and like getting to turn on just like the regular radio station and just hear themselves, it, it's, you know, that does a lot for a band. And that can be that can be the difference in motivation that pushes a band to the next level. Because they'd be like, okay, well, we were on the radio, so we need to really kind of, you know, we need to step things up. So this is gonna, you know, hopefully that can turn into people coming and checking them out. I had a guy that told me he was going to stop playing music. And he heard himself on the, the song on the radio that I played, and uh, it kind of pushed him to just if that's what I'm ta- Yeah, that's what you I'm know? talking about. And, you know, you, you've known me for how long? Yeah. Like, this is something I've always been passionate about. Yeah. Um, like I said, I was a, a very trusted advisor. Yes. For uh, <laughs> yes. Yes. So, you know, for, for what that's worth. I was, I was, telling, <laughs> I was telling someone a story about you and me today and uh it was it was about liam's and there were so it's very uh you know it's it you know the fact that me and popco are sitting here drinking beer is something that we've been doing for a very very long time and just thinking about like being at liam's and i remember like the one night where i was it was after i played at liam's and like i got up and my phone rang and uh, and it was it was my wife, <laughs> and I answered the phone and I said hello, and she's like, all she said was, "Are you fucking kidding me?" And I was like, <laughs> "What?" She's like, uh, "Do you know what time it is?" <laughs> and I said, "No," and she's like, "Well, I'm up for work if that gives you any clue." <laughs> so it was like six o'clock in the morning. And we were. Still <laughs> sitting there at the bar, just talking, like, morons. Thank you so much for putting up with me. I can't even believe what you do. <laughs> oh my god. I was single, so I'm I was such was a, rock I, and roll. Yeah, I was just, I was such an idiot. Anyway, <laughs> so it made you who you are today. It's yeah, all part of the for, process. For better or worse. Yeah, we're all, all very. I'm, yeah, I'm a work in progress. That's it. <laughs> That's it for sure. <laughs> Well, there's a lot of people here who, uh, you know, wish you success and, uh, you know, uh, thank you for, for doing this and, and, uh, and coming on our show. And, you know, one of the things that you'd said earlier about how the music scene was so uh, at each other's throats and, and whatever at one point. And I think now, even though that we've lost a lot of the, the venues and we've lost a lot of people who just won't show up, uh, whether it's a weekend or, or a weekday, uh, when local bands are playing like they used to, uh, I think one of the, the things that we have now that maybe we didn't have before is a lot of people getting together and supporting each other and playing, feeding off of each other as opposed yeah. to 
at each other's throats all the time. There's a Which lot is, more unity around here than I think there used to be. Well, and you know what? And that is that's that's a really awesome thing. It's also kind of a, it's what had to happen. It's right. really what had it, like. There's no other option. Like it's because it's such a, it's such a small, tight knit list of places that there are for you know people to use as a venue that, you know, they're the the bands kind of have to work with each other and for each other yeah um yeah which is great which is great um and you know that hopefully that leads to you know pushing other bands you know creatively because Mm -hmm. they're it's like they're you know i listen to this band and i listen to this band but i'm in a different band and i think what they're doing is awesome i think what they're doing is awesome and you know they i can try and add some of that to what we do you know and it's like and as long as the, the like the people who go out for the scene are a part of that too, so they're like the you know they'll go out and see all the bands, mm-hmm. you know that's uh, you know that's definitely something that should be the goal as well, you know, so and then like putting shows together of like the multiple bands and then having all their crowds come together and hopefully picking up new fans for everybody. Sure. Well, I, you still you still kind of keep in touch with and, and and you know keep abreast of what's going on. I try to. And, so too. I do. I am a. Uh, I, I do watch this show. It's, uh, it's, and so it's so you should too. And I'll chi- And I will chime in from time to time there, where there. Uh, where appropriate. <laughs> um, you know, especially if it's like, uh, especially if you have somebody that that I that I know well on here, I'll definitely yeah. you know kind of give them a hard time because it's <laughs> sort of what I do. Uh, but yeah, what you guys do to try and you know make people aware that you know there is talent here, yeah, and there's always been talent here, and there's always been great music from here, and um, you know you giving them you know a voice and having you know someone to you know speak for them, and a lot of people because and especially now that you told me there's no Electric City anymore and the Weekender being whatever it is. You give the people a way to be able to find out, you know, what's going on and who's, you know, who's going where. And then, you know, with your, like, uh, with your spotlight shows. Uh, yeah, we do the open mic. You know, super too. cool that, you know, people who, you know, might be, you know, they might not have the ability to go out and, like, call a place and say, oh, I want to play here. Yeah. So you give them a shot to, like, get themselves used to the idea of playing in front of people. It's terrifying. It's horrifying experience <laughs> it certainly is. first couple times that you go play in front of people you're like oh my god you're like you don't know these people and they're yeah. just sitting there and and people are just as mean as the internet by the way <laughs> like, so, <laughs> so you get to yeah you know you get to break yourself in and, and and figure out what works and figure out what doesn't in a cool like in a cool environment so thank you for doing that well thank you i i, I appreciate your support absolutely and thank you all for tuning in uh, I guess I guess it? we'll we'll wrap up here because we are we are over time, but uh, you know we we're obviously gonna make extra it. time for this guy here. I don't know when to shut up. Considering he's got he's nervous talker. Yeah, I just finally got on to the third Such beer. It's good, Allie. You were right. It's good. See, see, there you go. <laughs> I just found out what my bus code is. I'm not telling you. <laughs> oh, and so. and even even Hirsch is in the comments there. Oh, where's yeah. Frank at? <laughs> Frank. And so who's that guy with the with with, uh, with no hair and no beard? Yeah, I know. I shaved right? the beard off. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I used to be a. Uh, um, I used to be fat, and like I was kind of like in denial about being fat. So like I had a I had a really long goatee that like hid all the extra chinage, and the cool thing about a longer goatee is that it like makes your face look longer, so uh-huh. like you don't look as round. But back to the internet being mean, uh, when you get your picture taken a lot and you see like Instagram a lot and all the photographers that take your pictures at shows, they're all like down in the pit. Right. And so they're, they're like all looking underneath you taking the most <laughs> unflattering angle pictures of all time. It's just like, shit. I didn't know I had man boobs that big. Why? I need better friends. Tell me I look like a slob. God. So, but, um. Well, your looking's felt. Yeah, I've I've uh, lost quite a bit of weight, and you know, tried to get myself into shape. I'm 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 catching all. As you get you. as you get older, things hurt more. <laughs> and, um, I had some issues with my back last year, 
that had me uh, that had me like on the floor in like debilitating pain. Mm. Like, between the summer and fall runs of the Five Finger Death Punch tour, I spent that entire time laying on my floor because I couldn't <laughs> I couldn't stand up, I couldn't walk, I couldn't do anything. I have uh, I have a herniated disc in my back, and like dealing with that was god awful. Nice. So I went through all kinds of stuff: physical therapy, the chiropractor. Uh, epidural injections, anything I could do to get myself back up and like running short of pain medication because I wasn't going to mess with any pain pills. Mm. Uh, but outside of that, um, yeah, and it was a nightmare. So um, so at that point, it was time to start getting myself and, you know, trying to take care of myself a little better mm. so that I can, uh, you know, do little things like stand up and walk. <laughs> Important things. Those are those right. are those are important things. So, and and Ben's doing well too. Cause Ben's he, doing great. He's lost a whole bunch of weight as well. Because um, we were yeah. He grew he a beard. Looks, yeah, he, yeah, he grew. He got the beard that you don't encourage that. <laughs> oh, I love it. Oh my god. I'm, it's, pro, yep. I'm pro beard. Yeah. Yep. Go Ben. Yep. Ben's got Ben's got a beard. It's a sexy beard. Jason tries to get me to grow a beard, and uh, so the I noticed that like some of the pictures that you used for the advertising were. I have like kind of a beard a in those bit, yeah. pictures. It was mm-hmm. like kind of growing in. My this this region and this one right here are kind of on the struggle bus. Like <laughs> get a little I get a little patchy, you know? So it's like I can't uh, that was a long time that took to grow in. And uh, you know, Jason would be like, "Oh, you got to grow the beard. You got to grow." The-. He's like, "You look younger with the beard." I'm like, I can see how much gray hair is in this thing. I don't <laughs> think so. Um, but yeah, that's uh, my wife my wife Kara would be like it looks great. Don't bring it in my house. <laughs> <laughs> but, it looks, <laughs> but it looks great. <laughs> so, yeah. It's just like, it looks fine. Just don't touch me just with it. It's weird. It just leave it on tour. Yeah, it's weird. You can always leave count it, on the way for us. Leave it on Absolutely. the bus. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, I'd, uh, yeah, I'd be dead in a, like a gutter somewhere with, or in jail <laughs> without, without that woman for sure. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, well, thank you to the wives out there. Thank you all for listening. Uh, yeah, especially his wife. Good God. When he, when Mama he Popko. Put up with this guy. How? Him and his kn- weird, creepy cardboard cutout that oh he hangs out here. It's ridiculous. I'm taking it home with me. <laughs> Take on tour with you. Oh, my God. I'll be famous without even being there. So good. <laughs> so I'm going to give it to Joe Rogan. I'm going to find a way to send that you thing to, to Joe Rogan. You have yes. to just tell him I said hello. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Joe yeah. Rogan, if you're watching, I have a cardboard cutout of John Popko for you. And and the shirt is actually from his website. Yeah. Hashtag free part, freak party. There you go. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, I think it's... I'm, and I'm wearing the fanny pack, too, in the, in the, the cutout. You it's incredible. incredible. It's also from Joe Rogan's website. Not so. that you like Joe Rogan or anything. It's no. Weird. Dude, just have him, like... It's not weird at all. Have him, like, no. just take a video that says, hey, Popka, what's up? And yeah. my life will be I'll, complete. I'll, I'll, I'll go get it. Yeah. I'd like to point yeah. out that I don't know Joe Rogan. Uh, but you will. One day. One day. But you will. <laughs> He's going to get it. One day I'm going to meet Joe Here Rogan. And if I meet Joe Rogan... We're gonna make sure that this thing. Oh, this this is what he's been terrifying oh, me with every time my. he's not, not here. Just, not just God. everybody in his office. Yes, uh, the Cole team. Holly, been like the Cole team is like yeah. We've come in in this a bunch of times. I thought like somebody was in the corner and like, oh, jumped yeah. back and stuff. That's yeah, good. That's pretty good. Should I grow my hair back, maybe? That's yeah, maybe. Good. <laughs> oh, I like it. That's great. Well, you know, our our interview next week should be interesting. We're gonna get, get delve more into. John here and the uh, my departure. Yes, and your 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 whole weird weirdness freak party thing. <sighs> Joe Rogan, let's hang out. Come on. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, everybody. We will see you here uh, uh, next Thursday, seven a.m. PM. Thank you. Sounds great. Have a good I'm night. I'm gonna everybody. watch. You should watch too. Thank you, everybody. Thank you to Aaron. Thank you to all your all the Breaking Ben fans. You guys are crazy in a great way. It's awesome that you guys flooded our comments. We'll and, see you this uh, summer. We'll see you next night. I'll see you in Wisconsin. I'll see you like next week. <laughs> Let's do this. Cool. Have a good night, everybody.